Here we have a 24 foot wide by 36 foot long concrete foundation that's ready for the beam to be installed. Sitting on the pad footings, we have our steel columns. And in the beam pockets, we have some steel shims installed that the beam will sit on. It's very common to use a steel I-beam in a, in a modern house. And if it was a steel I-beam, we'd probably be able to get away with just one support post. But here is what it would look like with a steel I-beam installed. Today though, we're going to go over the installation of a built up wood beam. A built up wood beam is built on site using standard dimension lumber, two by tens, two by twelves, that can be just picked up at your local lumber yard. The Ontario Building Code has certain rules about where you can locate the joints in a built up wood beam. Even though you might think it would be best to have the joints in the beam over the pose, the Ontario Building Code encourages us to put the joints at the quarter points of the clear spans. The clear span is measured between the supports. So in this case, in this span, it would be between the two plates on these columns. So here, the clear span of this middle span of the beam is 11 foot 3 inches. And over here at the end, the span is measured from where the beam leaves the foundation, where it leaves the, the plate basically under the foundation, to, again, the edge of the post plate. And in this span, it's a little bit different. It's 11 foot two and a half. It's within half inch of the other span. When you uh, determine the size of this beam using span tables, you make sure to use the bigger span, 11 foot three. Make sure you have a beam that can span that distance. So to determine the quarter points, we're going to use one quarter of 11 foot three in this case. There is a little bit of a tolerance there though. The building code says this joint can be actually within plus or minus six inches of the quarter point dimension. Sometimes you might shift the position of that joint a little bit just to make use of a certain length of lumber. So one quarter of 11 foot three is two foot nine and three quarters. And that's where this joint is positioned in this particular beam. So that's the, the distance that we can use in this particular beam. That's where the joints can be that far, two foot nine and three quarters approximately away from the supports. In this example, we have a four ply beam. The number of plies and the size of the lumber depends on the span of the beam and the width of the floor that the beam is supporting. The size of the beam is also affected by the number of stories it is supporting. In the first layer of this beam with three spans, we have a long piece of 2x12, then a medium length of 2x12, and then it finishes with a shorter length of 2x12. In the next ply, the pattern is reversed. It starts with a long piece, then a medium piece, and then a short piece at the end. The pattern just keeps alternating for the rest of the plies. The joints can't line up in adjacent plies, and the total thickness of the joints can't be more than half the thickness of the beam. Here, the joints add up to three inches, in a six inch wide beam, so we're okay because it's not more than half. The joints have to be on what are called the interior quarter points. In this first span, we don't have any joints in this first span, and then the two by 12 cantilevers pass the support to the interior quarter point. That short cantilever supports this longer piece that's extending over the other column. It's the same idea at the end here. This piece of 2x12 cantilevers past the post to the interior quarter point and supports the short piece of 2x12 at the end. Now you can't use a quarter point here. That would be too far a cantilever. So you have to use these, which are the interior quarter points. And this would be another interior quarter point in here as well. You can't use the halfway points either. It has to be the interior quarter points. So let's wrap up this four ply built up beam example and we'll go over some construction details as well. Each ply would start with a long piece, a long piece of two by 12. And then there would be a medium length piece and then a short piece at the end. And then it would just alternate across the width of the beam. And you'd nail each ply to the next one with a minimum of two, three and a half inch nails, 18 inches on center. Since you can directly nail into a wood beam, uh, it's typical that the top of a wood beam is set so that it's the same height as the sill plate that runs around the foundation. 
the floor joists will be installed next and we'll be able to nail the joist to both the sill plate and to the top of the wood beam. A wood beam can't be in direct contact with the concrete foundation. So you have to provide a half inch airspace, both at the sides of the beam and uh, at the end of the beam as well. You need that same airspace. So you can see it here, half inch at the end as well. The use of steel shims under the beam prevents the beam from wicking moisture from the concrete foundation below it.